Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone, and we're sticking with the track and field on the Sports Max Zone, but heading to Zagreb, Croatia now, where Grenadian Kirani James and Jamaican Shanika Ricketts registered victories for the English speaking Caribbean at the World Continental Tour Gold Meeting. James won the men's 400 meters, a meet record 44.46 seconds beating Botswana's Isaac Makwala, who clocked 45.15 seconds, and Italy's Eduardo Scotti, who ended third in 45.30 seconds. Ricketts, an Olympic fourth place finisher, won the women's triple jump with a best of 14.77 meters. She was 40 centimeters clear of second place. Neja Filipic of Slovenia, who left a personal best of 14.37 meters. American Devon Allen once again turned back the challenge of Jamaican's Ronald Levy and Olympic champion Hansel Parchment in the 110-meter hurdles. Allen clocked a personal best at 12.99 seconds, with Levy second in 13.11 and Parchment third in 13.12. And in a highly anticipated women's 200 meters, Christine M. Boma, the world under-20 record holder, and Olympic silver medalist easily beat Olympic 100-meter bronze medalist Sharika Jackson. Emboma clocking a meet record 22.04 with Jackson second in 22.30 and Bahamian Antonique Strawn third in 23.05 seconds. Well, Leighton Levy is still with us and Leighton, let's start with the women's 200-meter clash. Surprise victory that was more comfortable for Mboma today after a close Diamond League finals. Yeah, I think um, when you look at what it is, you saw the fatigue in Sherika's legs. At 150, she had, her legs weren't even coming up anymore while Mboma was storming home like a train. Um, it's, it's, it's a combination, I think, of fatigue and, of course, improving confidence from Mboma, knowing that she can take on one of the best sprinters in the world and beat her consistently. She's now 3-0 against Sherika. And of course, as I said previously, the only person in the world who she hasn't beat over the distance this year is, of course, Elaine Tom. And of course, that tells you how well she's been running. 20, down 22.04 is the slowest time she's run, I think, since the Olympic Games. And it also, and I think that suggests also a little bit of fatigue in her legs as well. But when you look at, for example, see Sherika Jackson here, she's beginning to struggle now with the last 50 meters. Her, she can't find anything more, and Boma pulling away running uh, a comfort, comfortably in 22.04. The younger 18-year-old, of course, you know, fresher legs, you know, stronger, obviously, um, you know, continuing to be consistently faster on the last 50, 60 meters of three. Yeah, we're going to move along now to Kirani James. Of course, a brilliant performance from him, him today. Your assessment of the season? I think Kirani had a good season. Of course, Olympic medal, bronze. He has a full set now. Um, you know, 43-8, and of course, running consistently 44 mids after the Olympics. I think he will, he will probably be very pleased with this season and pleased with the times that he's knowing that this is a platform that he can build on going forward. Because as I said before, the, the challenges that he's had with his health and, of course, with injuries and, of course, the loss of his mother this year, you know, it, it was, it's a strong season given the, the, the challenges that he's had to deal with. So now that he's able to do that and put the season behind him, well, he obviously been looking forward to a much better season next year when he has greater control over the grave disease and he would have been able to put the other adversities behind him. But it was a very strong end to a very good season for Karani James. Definitely. And then we had Shanika Ricketts, of course, winning the women's triple jump. Another Jamaican, you know, putting her name out there and winning a gold medal. Look, I'm, I think it's a tr almost a travesty that Charika, uh, that Chanika did medal at the Olympics because she's consistently been the next best triple jumper in the world behind Yulimar Rojas for the last two seasons, three seasons almost. Um, so you're looking at somebody coming in 1477, winning by 40 centimeters. That, that's a huge, a massive victory. And her consistency this season as well, she'd be pleased with. She'd be disappointed not being able to win at the Olympic Games, win a medal at the Olympic Games, knowing that of course, I think everybody was jumping for anything but the gold medal because of Rojas' dominance in the event. But, you know, when you look at what um, Shanika has done all season, she would have been disappointed at not meddling, but would be happy, I think, with the rest of her season, given how consistent she's been. And, of course, it's something to build on as well. She jumped 15.02 this year, slightly wind-dated, so she knows she can do it. 
So coming into next year now, she'll be able to say, okay, we've done it next this last year. Let's see what we can do going to the World Championships in Oregon next year. And of course, I'm expecting a lot better from her going forward. And But she did say something that is a concern. There is pretty much nobody, I, I, well, I don't see much talent coming through from Jamaica in the triple jump to replace her. She's not exactly the youngest athlete. She has maybe you know, two or three good years left ahead of her. You know, who's going to be the person to come up to replace her eventually? But she's, she's been having a, an outstanding year like she has been for the last two seasons. Yeah, definitely one to watch. Well, in the men's 110 meters, we have the American Devon Allen, of course, winning. Where did Hansel Patchmont and Levy lose this particular event? Um, Devon Allen is just has hit a, a very nice um, patch of form since the Olympics. Um, his last three meets, 13.06, 13.10, 12.99 today. Um, he has been consistently getting better since the Olympic Games. What I think the problem perhaps is, is that during the Olympics, going through the rounds takes a little bit more out of his legs than it does the other athletes. But when it comes to one-off races, he's as good as anybody out there right now, and he's been proving it since the Olympic Games. The times that he's run are among the fastest times in the world this year. Levy ran 13.06 when he lost to him in, uh, in, in Zurich. That's just 100th of a second outside his personal best. Devon Allen, in the meantime, has gone from 13.03, I think it was, or 13.06, to 12.99. He's been hitting, he's hit his stride at the end of the season, and I'm sure he will be wishing that he would have hit it earlier, uh, just like a month earlier. But, but you know, I, I'm not going to kill Levy and, of course, Parchment. They, they won the medals that really matter this season at the Olympic Games, gold and bronze. So I think they'll be happy to end the season, of course, with a second and third place finish, respectively and come home now and build for next year. I think, I think everybody's happy coming out of this race. Yeah, you know, Leighton, we have to look forward to next year and the World Championship in Eugene, Oregon, with a lot of anticipation. And the men's sprint hurdles is certainly one of them because, you know, we're talking about the Devon Islands of this world and Parchment and Levy and so on. But Omar McLeod, who was the world champion in, in Doha, um, comes in here with um, a, a season that he would like to forget, obviously. <laughs> but he'll be back next year, I'm sure. So it makes things hot for next year, doesn't it? It does, because we have a very deep, deep pool of talent for the Jamaica sprint hurdlers. Huh? You have Omar McLeod, of course, who the, the previous Olympic champion who didn't get a chance to defend his title because he didn't make it at our championships. Um, of course, he was dethroned by Galloway in 2019. Of course, he was yeah. world champion in 2017. But in addition to him, Levy, Parchment, De Damian Thomas, Nemonius, um, of course, Rashid Broadbill, we're looking at seven or eight young men who are coming through the national championships next year to select a team for the championship for the for the world championships is going to be as deep as perhaps we probably see in the Olympic Games, notwithstanding the presence of a Galloway. Because I think there's so much talent coming through now in Jamaica on both the male and female side. And of course, you know, next year, of course, the Olympic champion, the last two Olympic champions will line up at the national championship in addition to the the Olympic bronze medalist, as well as the NCAA indoor champion, and of course, an NCAA finalist in the morning. So you're looking at a quality, quality, quality coming through for Jamaica in terms of the sprint hurdles. Well, Leighton, thank you so much for joining us, and we're looking forward to talk to you again when the track and field kicks off. Well, that's weird on in October, so I'm So, glad. well, we See can talk to you another time then, maybe about another topic. No, maybe not. <laughs> well, Leighton has excluded himself, but thank you. I said, I mean, it was a great season, so I'm looking forward to, of course, to next year. Of course, we'll get some rest then, Leighton. Thanks. Always a pleasure talking to you guys. <laughs> All right, we take a short break and come back. Leighton wasn't, he didn't even blink before he said no. <laughs>